Hello everyone, it's the 20th of March, Friday, and we are back in business here to go through some of the readings and take a look at these and what they have to offer us today. For our opening prayer today, I thought I'd begin with what we'll discuss here in a few minutes, the Shema prayer. The Shema prayer is the most important prayer uh, to the Jews, even to this day. And we're going to pray that together. If you have your gospel for today in front of you, you could probably say it along with me as we enter into this prayer together. And so we'll say this prayer and then I'll add a little bit of insight to that after we finish our prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus says, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He says, there is no other commandment greater than these. Father, in these challenging times, in these times where we might be a little more frustrated after a few days of entering into solitude, of just being by ourselves or being confined to our homes, we ask you to help us to see the power in this powerful prayer, the Shema prayer that Jesus gives us that's all over the Old Testament. Help us to know that you, the God of Israel, the God of our fathers, the God who we believe in, who gives us everything, is with us and that you will continue to be with us through these struggles. Lord, you tell us that we shall love you with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our strength, with all of our minds. Help us, Father, to do that to the best of our human ability. Help us to know that when we do not do it well, that we need not beat ourselves up, but pick ourselves up with your grace so that you might help us to love you and love our neighbor as we are called to. And Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have prayed that prayer today a number of times in my own time in prayer. Hear, O Israel which is what Shema is. It's all of the words kind of Shema mean here, O Israel, if we were to, they're transliterated there. <clears throat> but that's what it means. And that is what this prayer is all about, that we are called to love the Lord our God alone, with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, with all our strength. And as I considered that today, and I looked at the first reading as well, a particular phrase came to my mind, and the phrase is this, that we are called to love that which is unlovable. I'm called to love that which is unlovable. You are called to love that which is unlovable. We're called to love each other when we are unlovable. People have been called to love me when I'm unlovable. And we're all called to do that for one another, and that is where I want to begin because I want to jump back to our first reading today. Our first reading is from the prophet Hosea, which is an incredible book. And even if you're sitting around not knowing what to read, a great story, even the first three or four chapters of Hosea is an incredible story. And I want to give a little historical context to what's going on in the book of Hosea and the prophet, of, prophet Hosea. Hosea is in the 8th century BC, which is in the 700s. And it's just prior to 722. And in 722 is an overwhelmingly difficult time in prep and even the time prior to that is a difficult time. Because it is then that the Assyrians are really knocking on the door of Israel, which is the northern kingdom. And we won't get into the explanation of northern kingdom and southern kingdom today. Who knows how long we'll be doing this? We can maybe do that another time. But the northern kingdom, Israel, 
is under siege from the Assyrians and there's constant worry and fear in the time of Hosea that they're going to come in and take over and destroy Israel, the northern kingdom. So Hosea is trying to make sense out of this to the people and how they have fallen away because they have fallen in again to pagan worship, to worship of other gods, not believing in God, falling away from God, not following his statutes, not following his ordinances, not following the law, the Torah, uh, uh, the law, the five first books of the Old Testament, not following the Decalogue, which is the Ten Commandments. They're just struggling and they're overwhelmed by sin. And the story of Hosea is his life kind of is connected to the life of Israel, and he does that. And he's asked to do something outrageous from the Lord, <clears throat> seemingly outrageous. And what he's asked to do is, I would say, he's called to love that which is unlovable. And Hosea is asked to marry this woman, Gomer. It's in prayer that God reveals to him he's called to marry a woman, Gomer, which is an interesting name. <clears throat> and Gomer... The interesting thing about her is that she is, we'll call her a lady of the night for those, for those that are watching this to keep it uh, at the PG level. She is living a life of great immorality and constantly living a life of being with other men and God asks Hosea to marry Gomer, this lady of the night, this woman entering into some stuff she shouldn't be entering into. And anyhow, Gomer is doing all that. Hosea marries her. He's basically being asked, love her who is unlovable, and she will not love you in the way that you would desire. He has three children with her, and Gomer keeps going around on him, keeps going with other men, being with other men, and she doesn't, can, she doesn't, love him in the way she's called to love him and he's trying to reveal to her Hosea is constantly coming back to her even when he goes around with her with other men doing things with other men she shouldn't be <clears throat> in the middle of his marriage God keeps asking her to keep going back keep going back keep going back he's asking her to love that which is unlovable and Hosea is going through his own struggles with this battling with this trying to love a woman that he's finding often very unlovable. And God keeps asking him to have the strength and giving him the strength to do it. And he keeps doing it. And he compares that to what is going on in Israel. Because the people of Israel in the northern kingdom keep turning their back on God, keep going and believing in false gods, keep going and doing whatever they want to do, living life in the way they want to live it. And they're abandoning God over and over. And God keeps coming back to them, loving them when they are unlovable. And he keeps returning and returning. <clears throat> and Hosea is becoming clear on this <clears throat> as he is going through this instance with his wife, Gomer. And it's a beautiful portrayal of that. The story is really great. I just did a quick run through of the whole story of Hosea there. <clears throat> and <clears throat> where we are in today's First reading is just that, where Hosea is telling them, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. And he's basically saying, God keeps loving you, and you have been unlovable. And he's used the example of his own life, his own wife, to be able to show that, that I am trying my best to love that which is unlovable, as God is trying his best to love you when you are unlovable. And he's going to keep coming and he's going to keep returning. So you need to keep returning to the Lord. And so we keep that in mind as we think about today's gospel and that Shema prayer. That this is what the Lord asks of us. And it's what he asks of the Hebrews, the Israelites. That was, this was the first thing that young boys and girls would learn when they would learn their prayers. Is maybe we learn our Our Father, our Hail Marys, and our Glory Bees. Well, the first thing Jewish children still learn to this day is this prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord. The Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's it. That's the key to it all. 
And the Lord has to keep reminding us of it. And so I would ask you to just keep praying this prayer over today. And just ask him, the Lord, Lord, help me to love you with all my heart. Help me to love you with all my soul. Help me to love you with all my mind. Help me to love you with all my strength. Because we need a constant reminder. It's so easy for us to turn our backs on God at any moment to start doing things we shouldn't be doing. And that is what Jesus is reminding us of today. And I close with a few thoughts of what Jesus says in the second line. He says, the second most important commandment is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if we love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, we're going to love our neighbors as, our, as, as we are called to. And that is what Jesus did for us. Jesus died for us, as it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. He died for us while we were yet sinners. People who were still unlovable, God still gave love to us when we were most unlovable. And he still does it to us today when we are most unlovable. And here's the challenge for today. I know that people are probably starting to get a little cabin fever, sitting at home, being around the same people in your family over and over, these people that you love. But unquestion undoubtedly, I imagine you're all starting to struggle with being around one another in overwhelming amounts. And it might be a little difficult to love one another right now, and it's gonna become consistently more challenging. And perhaps a brother or a sister is very unlovable today. Perhaps a husband or a wife is very unlovable today. Perhaps someone else lives in your house with you and they're very unlovable today. Jesus is challenging me and challenging you to love that which is unlovable, as he challenged Hosea to, and as he challenges us to in this Shema prayer, to love that which is unlovable. And how many times in my life have I been reminded by people who love me, family, friends, other people, that they love me when I am unlovable. And our job for one another, brothers and sisters, is to love one another when we are unlovable. That is what Hosea reminds us of. That is what Jesus reminds us of. And it's my challenge to myself today. And it's my challenge to all of you. When we don't feel like loving, when other people might be unlovable, let's love them nonetheless. Because Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. And he loves us deeply and will keep returning to us even when we're unlovable. Which means he has the same expectation for me and for you, to love that which is unlovable. May we do that to the best of our ability today. I close again with this Shema prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, help us to love one another, the people who are in our lives right now. Help us to love them even when they are unlovable. And help, uh, help them to have the grace to love us when we are unlovable. Give us that grace. And we ask again this all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. No, I miss you all greatly. And I can't wait to see you face to face. May God continue to guide you. May he continue to bless you. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll see you all soon.